raising the participation age. Um, you may be familiar with this term. If you're not, it's uh, in a nutshell, it's the, the government guidance that everyone in England has to be in some form of education until their 18th birthday. So when I was 16, a while ago, uh, 2001, I think, not that old, we could finish school at 16 and then you could stay on for college or sixth form or you could go and get a job. Now, it's slightly different in that people are being um, encouraged to, to stay in education of some form. So the options there, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, A-levels, uh, technical or vocational courses include T-levels, which we'll talk about a bit today as well, apprenticeships or traineeships, or employment and part-time study. Um, so we'll, again, we'll have a look at each one of those in a bit of detail. And the last one there is something that we get quite a lot of questions on. Um, so there, yeah, there's, there's a bit of key information in there that that kind of uh, a lot of parents and a lot of teenagers ask us about quite a lot. So for A-levels and technical or vocational courses, um, including T-levels, that's the sort of first thing that springs to mind, I think, in a lot of people's heads when they finish in school. Um, going to sixth form or going to college is the sort of expected thing that most people imagine they'll be doing if they want to stay in education. Obviously, we know all about A-levels. Uh, we've all heard enough about A-levels in the last week, I think. Um, A-levels obviously are sort of specific for if you want to go to university, really. Um, that's kind of what they're designed for now. There, there are very few employers who will ask about A-levels or who will take an 18-year-old on on the sort of strength of, of A-levels. Um, you know, it can, it can help. It can show that you, you're capable and competent. But really, we want to be encouraging people to take A-levels if they want to go to university. I think a lot of people fall into A-levels just because they go to a school that has a sixth form and all of their mates are staying on a sixth form and they want to stay there, you know, where it's comfortable and where they know everyone and they know the teachers and stuff. But really, they, they should be thinking, do, you, do I want to go to university? If yes, then I should look at A-levels. Um, you know, if no, A-levels might not be suitable. Technical and vocational courses, including um, T-levels, uh, NVQs, um, level threes that you do at colleges. It's really, really important that young people understand that you can do most of these qualifications and still go to university. Um, you can gain UCAS points from T levels, from college courses. So you don't have to do A levels to go to university, do something else. If you are more vocationally minded, if you prefer something more hands-on, if you've had enough of school and you want to go to college, um, you know, that's still a, a viable option. Um, I'm just going to talk about T-levels for a minute because they are quite new. They, you know, are in the process of sort of being ruled out um, over this year and the, the next couple of years. And there are some providers who are delivering T-levels um, this academic year. Uh, and then obviously the next two academic years, there are going to be more and more. So T-levels are, I would say the best way to describe them is they're a combination between A-levels and apprenticeships. So you get the technical skills and work experience similar to what you would get with an apprenticeship, but you get the academic study that would come with A-levels. And the way it's worked out is you, you're at a college uh, or a, a T-level provider for two years. So it's the same length as A-levels, but during each year you get 
released onto industry placements. Uh, those industry placements are usually, I think, around about the sort of 30 or 40 days mark, and depending on the employer and the structure of it. But generally, you'll you'll do some some time at college or a sixth form. You'll get released into the wild, <laughs> into your industry placement that's been arranged sort of um, before you've joined the course. So you're going to know when you sign up for the course what industry placement you're doing, uh, and then you'll go back to to college for the rest of it. So when you come out of it at the end of it, you have you have a vocational qualification. You have um, technical expertise in, in that field. You have workplace experience, again, with the reference, which I can't stress enough is really important. You can get A level, you know, references from a teacher from A levels, but having a reference from someone in a workplace at a company is, is really big. Even, you know, if you're looking for, for part time work or, or full time work when you're finished, uh, it can really help. It can be a bit of a barrier in the work in the work if you're applying for a job you don't have any references because you've only ever just been in school um so yeah it, it can really be a big boost um what it does as well the the t level is it gives people a real taste of what it's like to be in the workplace without the responsibility of an apprenticeship um so with apprenticeships, it is a big commitment. You're committing to a full-time job where you're expected to act as a, a full sort of legal employee of the company and 16-year-olds. For some 16-year-olds, it's fine, but for a lot of 16-year-olds, that can be quite a lot of responsibility straight from school. So a two-level is for technically-minded people who aren't quite sure that they, that they want to make that sort of leap straight into full-time work um there's a lot of information about t levels on, on the t level site but what i'm going to share um it's really useful it's a, a list of providers who are offering t levels so if you're speaking to a young person or if there are any young person watching um you can have a look at the, the t level provider list and that'll tell you about um, which providers are offering three levels in which parts of the country, in which areas, because there are also a lot of um, different sectors in two levels as well. So, thanks, Jamie. Um, see, there's some questions coming in down the side. Um, once I've finished this presentation, um, me and Sharon will go through the questions, so don't worry if you've asked a question you think it's being ignored. We, we have seen them all coming in, and please keep them coming. We'll go through them all at the end um, so we can talk about them, you know, just in a bit more detail. Um, for anyone who's joined us late, uh, welcome. My name is Mark, Careers Advisor at the National Careers Service. We've been talking about choices at 16 and choices at 18. and going to be answering your questions with Sharon from the map uh, probably in about five minutes or so once I've finished this presentation you've been listening to me for a while now so I appreciate that if you're still here so apprenticeships or traineeships um, again you know similar to, to what was said um, just there it is a, it is a commitment it is going into work I think a lot of young people find it a bit of a shock that they're expected to arrive at nine and they have to stay there all day and you know they can't always hang around with the mates and get a break when they want so if a young person is considering an apprenticeship it's really important that they understand the commitment that they're making at 16 they're going to be eligible for intermediate or advanced apprenticeships and um, so GCSE equivalent or a level equivalent that's going to be uh, one year or two years in length. So they, they have to understand, you know, I think people think, well, I can go to college for a bit and, and drop out and it doesn't matter too much. And people do start apprenticeships and do leave them quite soon. And obviously that's quite damaging for the employer who's invested in them. 
but it also just looks really bad on their CV as well. And it's going to put future employers off if they think they were there for a few months and then and they dropped out. You know, uh, how do I know that they're not going to do the same? There are loads of benefits to apprenticeships. You, you learn a skill, you, you earn a living. They can help gain independence a lot quicker than staying in education. And of course, the qualifications you get are accredited. And if you do an advanced level apprenticeship, you get a level three qualification, which in most cases will give you UCAS points. So you would still have the option of going on to university if you've done an advanced level apprenticeship. That's a really important thing as well. No choice that a young person makes rules out any other choices. And I think that's really important. They understand that if all of their friends are thinking about going to university and they want to do an apprenticeship but they think that oh, well why is everyone else doing that am i making the wrong decision they can do an apprenticeship and go to university they can do a job for a while in university they can go to university and then do an apprenticeship you know uh, the other way around so there's no right or wrong answer and remind people that we have long careers and in this day and age a job for life is not really what it used to be you know people don't tend to stay in the same career for 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 the whole you know length of their life so it's very common to change to change your mind it's perfectly acceptable and nobody's going to judge them if you do that so it's really important but that kind of attitude, I think, just takes a little bit of the pressure off them because we speak to an awful lot of young people who are really stressed and worried that these decisions that they're being asked to make are going to decide their destiny and, you know, dictate the rest of their life. And we can't really tell them hard enough that that's not the way it is. And anything that we can do to make them feel a bit more comfortable and make them realise, you know, this decision isn't the be all and end all uh, and I can do this for a couple of years and do something else I think just puts them at ease a little bit and when they are at ease they, they make better decisions as well so that's really um, so the the last part just before we finish up and go to your questions is the reason the participation age guidelines young people at 16 who don't want to continue education. So they don't want to do sixth form, they don't want to do college, they don't want to do an apprenticeship. Um, they just want to work. You are allowed to work at 16. Remember that these guidelines run up until the age of 18. As long as you're doing some part-time study as well. So the regulations for raising the participation age are that you're doing A levels or college or T levels or an apprenticeship, or if you are working, working for 20 hours a week or more, that can be paid employment or volunteering, and you're doing part time study. The guideline for part time study, as you can see there, is 280 guide learning hours, which doesn't really mean much. It, work, it works out around about one day a week. So if someone wanted to do a full-time job and they were doing a, an evening course at college that was one or two nights plus a bit of self-study on the weekend, um, that would that would tick the box. Eight hours, roughly, um, spread out over term time meets the guidance for that. And it has to be an accredited qualification, so they can't just say, I'm doing a free online course in you know, beginner Spanish or, or whatever. Um, they have to be doing something that's off-call registered that gives them a, some sort of certification or, or accreditation at the end. Um, so as long as they're doing that, then they can work as, as much as they want or as little as they want down to 20 hours a week. Again, that can be volunteering as well. The question we get asked again with this is what happens if you don't? Each local council is responsible for enforcing these guidelines. And I think enforcing is probably a bad word because 
these guidelines aren't designed to trick people or to force people into education. Local councils have something called a September guarantee, which is where if a young person doesn't have anything to start in September, the council will do everything in their power to support that person. And if it gets to September and they still haven't found anything, and that person becomes neat, the council will continue to work as hard as they can to get support. So these guidelines aren't, they're not a punishment for not doing things. They're a way of supporting people. And I think a lot of young people and a lot of parents think that they're going to get into trouble if they're not going to college and they get caught, you know, and that's totally the, the opposite of how it works. These guidelines are designed to give people the support that they need. So it's really important if people get to September and they haven't found anything, that they're seeking support, that they understand that they're not going to get in trouble uh, or anything like that, that if they come for help to national careers or to the local council or local young people service, they're going to get all the help that they need to, to find something. Nobody wants to punish anyone. Every, every, we all want to, you know, to give people the help that they need. Um, and that's a, a really important thing as well. And again, it goes back to taking that pressure off people. We speak to a lot of young people and a lot of parents panicking because it's the middle of August and they haven't got anywhere to go in September and they think that the, you know, the world's going to collapse. And it's really not. And it's better to not just sign up for some course just because it starts in September and you need to do something in September. It's better to take your time to make the right decision and, and to do what's, what's right for you you know, at the time that it's right and not just doing something for the sake of doing it or because it's what you think you should be doing or because you think you're going to get in trouble. Because that's, that's really important. Um, so generally for, for more support and um, the career map, career mag uh, for, for school leavers, supports school leavers and teachers as well. There's lots of good stuff in there about a range of different industries and lots of different issues.